With that orange thing on but there. But not corals. Okay. No. No, no coral on the island. Well, I didn't want to go to the island anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did, Steve. Admit it. There's got to be a coral that he can bring. We'll look go for it. Yeah, OK. I, I can think of one right now, actually. Can you really? Yeah. Bubblegum coral? Bathy oh, there you go. Bamboo coral. Uh, bamboo yeah, bamboo and bubblegum. I like that. Okay, these are all um, ring anemones or uh, these kind of parasitic anemones. You can actually see a couple different stages here, some smaller ones. And there's also these, what looks like these galls starting to form. This is actually a defensive uh, feature of some of these bamboo corals. They calcify over some of these anemones sometimes. Uh, and they can incorporate basically the, the anemone into their skeleton, effectively snuffing it wow. out. And we've seen that in a couple of different groups, but the most notably bamboo corals are notorious for it. Cool. Yeah, there's So you could bring a gall, but not a coral. Yep. No coral. No coral by itself just on my island. What was that, Samantha? Just their galls. Yeah, just the gall. <laughs> Um, it looks like Atalanta might be starting to move. Yeah. Uh, which means we have about a four to five minute delay. Cool. Great. Okay. That seems shorter than I would have expected. Yeah, me too. Let's see if Atalanta actually moves. Looks like it. Yeah, it was five minutes according to uh, it's really Yes, you can bring a Brittany, but not a Steve. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Steve. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Like I said, I didn't want to go to the island anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Sour grapes. Can't bring those either. Yeah. You can bring a Gabby, mm. though. Yeah, yeah I'll absolutely be there. Absolutely bring a Gabby. But without Samantha. Sorry. Samantha's coming with her Zoom and her Google Meet. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there remote. <laughs> what about a pigeon? Pigeons? Nope. Pigeon. Like a bird? Yeah, pigeon. Oh, I thought you got no. it, but I'm not sure. <laughs> you can't bring a pigeon to my no island. Pigeons. You can bring a goose if you want. Yeah. Or boobies. Or boobies. Blue footed, yeah, red footed, right. masked. I'm telling you, scientists, write the data down. Look for trends. <laughs> Form a hypothesis. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, so let me go ahead and talk a little bit about the ROVs that we're using. So Can you zoom here on these two? Yeah. Those look yeah. a little different than what we've seen so far. There's a lot of coral down here. Yeah, so it's much coral. It's an yes. impressive site. It's a go for zoom, please. Science, are you happy keeping the ship moving? Uh, copy. Great. Both science? Uh, Rock copy. science? Yes. Great. For now. Uh-huh. Just looking for an ideal spot. Is that good, Steve? Uh, yeah, Turn that's a little tighter? That's good enough. Yep. Okay. Right now, I'm just looking for major differences in colonies. Um, figure when we do stop for a rock, we may consider a, a biological sample of representative species mm. in the area, but we'll do all that all at the same time. There's nice. not too many loose rocks around here, and the ones that are just kind of look like they're fractured crust. Um, Steve, when you want to do that, we'll need some heads up. We got like a lot of layback for the depth here. Sure. Yeah, also now. Atalanta did not move very much. Okay. So it we have we have moved, but it's so yeah. We're getting so momentum. So the up. more the more heads up we can get, the better. The more likely we'll be able to do all the things so in the one area. Yeah. What do you want? It's a kumba. Yeah, it's another rat tail. Cool. We've seen two in like ten minutes. That's pretty good. Go wide. All 
right, so like I was saying, we have two ROVs that we're using for this dive. If you're watching on um, channel one, that video feed is coming from Hercules as well as channel three. And then if you see the video feed on channel two, that is coming from our second ROV, which is Atalanta. So Hercules is the main Go one that we please. use. It's the one that is getting all of these really beautiful images and sampling and um, all those things. And then Atalanta is about 30 meters above Hercules and it helps to give us a better idea of where Hercules is on the ocean floor. And also it helps Go ahead, with the, you. so Atalanta is tethered to the ship and um, it helps to decouple the movement of the ship to Hercules so that that way Hercules is not um, disturbed by the movement of the ship at all. Atalanta is taking the brunt of it. Well explained, Brittany. Thank you. <laughs> There's at least two or three different species of Norella in this area, which is interesting. Um, bamboo coral is probably also two to three, I count. Oh, there's a, a large sea star on the stalk coming up uh, just oh straight yeah. ahead. That's pretty. Probably predating upon something. It looks like a celestrid sun star. This one's bigger than the one we saw last night. Or is that last night? A, c a couple nights ago we saw a, sea a sun star, but it looked like it was on the smaller side. Yeah, this this was the one that was um, eating the Bersingid, uh I think on our, one of our earlier dives. Go for some, please. Uh, thank you, Ashley. Mm. So it's probably not eating this sponge. The sponge looks thoroughly dead, but it's could be grazing on some of the other epifauna that are growing and living on the outside of the sponge. These are not planktivorous, so it's not using its tube feet to feed into the water column, but it's probably climbing up and feeding on something on this stalk. But still in a very nice shot of it. Yeah. All right, science is okay. As long as uh, we have captures, we can go on. Um, yeah, so those lasers that we're seeing are, we're using those to measure what we're picking up on the cameras. And they are spaced 10 centimeters apart. So to me, it looks like that sun star from end to end was maybe between 12 to 15 centimeters. So smaller than I thought. Thank you for joining us from Australia, or excuse me, Austria, not Australia. But yeah, this is really excellent. We just got to the bottom maybe 10 or 15 minutes ago and we're already seeing a whole lot of biology down here, so. There's a, there's an Aridogorgia species. That's a new one for the dive. Really nice shot of the fish in this habitat, something we want to definitely rat. document. So that that could be in a Magnus borellus, a Ritigorgia Magnus borellus, but it's very small. It's tough to tell sometimes. Probably more Magnus borellus like than maybe Bella, which is, has tighter coils mm. still. Great shot. Yeah, it's so good to have the cinema cam back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. This is reminding me a lot of the last thing that we actually saw last night before coming up. If Minus the rat tails. I was wondering, that was the fourth rat tail. Go for Zoom. And now we have a rat tail tally. Rat tail tally. <laughs> rat tail yeah. tally. Cool. 
or anemones on these bamboo corals. I think bamboo corals seem to be the dominant representatives here, but there are a fair number of primnoids. Again, they're closely related groups, so they're often very difficult to tell apart. And go away, please. I do remember a few of these bamboo species from another site. Some of them have very characteristic, uh, easy to identify polyp morphologies. Yeah, the first move was your, uh, 0406, and it, we're just like not moving. We're moving, just very slowly. It's taking a long time to get momentum started. So, um, I think that, oh, let's just keep going a little bit more. Chrysogorgia bottle brush here. Yeah. Uh, Can we zoom on brush. that? Yes. Come around. Yeah, it usually takes us a bit to get moving, and then once we have momentum, as long as we can just grab it and go. Go for two. We can keep it. Yeah, I'm not sure why it took so long for these moves to start. Yeah. Okay. That would make sense. Or an associate in there. No. Oh, looks okay. to be one. We did sample um, so current, yeah. uh, Chrysogorgia bottle brush, very similar to this on an earlier dive that did have an associate in as well. Bridge now. Come on. So this would be reminiscent of the Geniculata morph. And another five zero meters, one one five. Geniculata species, Chrysogorgia. Although there's a lot of different bottle brush types tough to tell, but we have a whole colony of this um, type of dense bottle brush that we can use to identify the material. Maybe after this move we could uh, try to shrink some of that layback. Or, I mean, the other thing is that we're going to be going on this kind of uh, flatter section before we start at the steep part of the ridge, so as long as we get layback sucked up by the time we get to the ridge. Or we're, I mean, we're on the ridge, but as we start to move up the slope. Mm -hmm. This place is, um, it's yeah, rat, there's this little saddle city. It looks like. I think we've, we've seen four rat tails already. Did you just see another one? Uh, about 10 seconds ago, it was in the cinema cam. Five. Oh, five. So somebody on the chat is wondering, what is your favorite coral? <laughs> Steve, I'll let you go first. Oh, no. <laughs> it's hard to choose. It's like picking your favorite kid. <laughs> <laughs> we is, that a, is that a xenophore? <laughs> we won't tell them. There? Oh, it's gone. Uh, I'm interested in this squiggly hair. OK, come around. I think I know what Gabby's favorite coral is. <laughs> what is it? Vermilla Gorgia Militaris. <laughs> no, that, I don't like that word. <laughs> 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 My favorite coral is definitely Aridogorgia. Yeah. yeah, mine Magnus too. Spiralis. What's that? Magnus Spiralis. The big spiral. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh. All right, so this is uh, also a bamboo coral. We're going to call this Lepidisis in quotes. That's how it's reported in the literature, but uh, in some of the guides. But it's, you know, it Lepidisis is one of those complex groups that's, um, the name is, is pretty meaningless when it comes to bamboo corals we see on the seafloor in this area. So we'll call it unbranched bamboo coral, quote unquote Lepidisis. All right, no associates, so let's go. Sorry, I could not hear with the influx of your voice what you want to call it in quotes. Uh, lep lepidisis. Yeah, you're out right now. Lepidisis. Lepidisis is, has traditionally been used to describe unbranched species of bamboo corals, but it actually falls out into several different clades of the bamboo corals, which suggests that branchiness or branching uh, at all is not really a reliable morphological characteristic. It 
it's like to delineate those yeah, yeah, different bamboo species on branch right stones. Side of it, and then we'll hit the it seems like Eredi Gorgia is also a so crowd favorite we'll in the it. chat. So Eredi kind of so also known as a firework coral. Very, very dramatic looking, very beautiful. This site kind of reminds me of um, some of the high density communities we're seeing on the southeast ridge outside of Jarvis. Um, the colonies are much smaller, but the density is pretty much right there. Uh, as soon as we got on bottom, we saw a bunch of high density bamboo corals uh, landed almost in the garden itself. Um, Steve, yeah. uh, on high pack, uh, we're kind of on this little knoll heading downslope into the saddle, it looks right. like. Do you want to follow this contour here, or do you want to go up, down, what are you thinking? We want to go through the saddle. Okay, so, uh, but to get off this little knoll, do you, are you thinking like riding this contour here, or? Yeah, we can go. Um, okay. or, or down or up. We can go down gently or whatever you're comfortable with, okay. but it's, uh, it's a very gentle down. Okay. Sounds good. Are we gentle down okay? Gentle down. Sea cucumber on the bottom left. Yeah, sea cucumber. Go for soup. Bridge now. Yeah, I think that one is uh, dead column. Add another five zero meters, please. Doesn't look alive. What was that, Steve? Um, I was looking at one of these Chrysogorgia colonies. They oh. look kind of dead, like the polyps are all falling off, and they look like a Charlie Brown tree. I am curious if uh, seems to be a higher density of coral colonies on the, the bumps and uh, these outcrops. Interestingly, the colonies are mostly oriented across the slope, so which suggests that maybe there's some up, up and down slope current is predominant um, in providing food supply for these corals. Not so much across the slope. Somebody's asking if they can bring a sea cucumber to my island. The answer is no, I'm so sorry. Oh. A uh, small cluster of sponges there. Very they all look like colophagus. Very strange branched colony. If it is a sponge, there could be secondary settlements. Unclear what's going on there. Another sea cucumber there. Just does not appear, yeah. It's done. You can also do individual ones up and down. Weird. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, the knob controlled everything at once. Okay. Everyone was just really low. I'm wondering if this sheet flow is associated with this bump here. Maybe yeah. we'll get some more broken material as we go down into the saddle. Okay. Yeah, I'm not too excited about these kind of just cracked off on the top of the flow, but I might just have to make a grab here pretty soon. I want to get at least one rock near, you know, uh, yeah. the depth. But what I mean, if we're going to be following this contour for a while, uh, we're not going to yeah. change too much in elevation. What's the glare we're getting on the computer, or on the screen? Uh, that's, down. that's down light. 
I'll flip it off. It's, it's just coming up on the screen captures too. Nice. Oh, that's better. Yes, you can bring a yellow perch to my island, but not a pink salmon. That cannot come. And you cannot bring a polyp. I'm sorry. Star, uh, the base of this coral here. Go for some. Come on, please. Sorry. Go for Zoom. Nice. So this is a Goniastrid sea star, Hypisteria. And this is a, one of the most prominent coral predators down here, so it could be moving in for the kill in that coral colony to the, just to the upper right of it. Of course, it'll take years to <laughs> eat on that. It's so a slow march. So Our zooms of the coral so far, we haven't seen any brittle stars, have we? Actually, yes, we did. One just one. fell. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as I finished that sentence, I saw it. It's one of my favorite things. I know. I had a tally for them going, but I didn't get as much joy out of it because it was too much work. <laughs> of the falling brittle stars? Yes. Which, by the way, can come to my island, the brittle stars. <laughs> There's another one, brittle star. Two brittle stars. Three brittle stars. I said I'm not keeping track. <laughs> <laughs> Go for Zoom. Looks like it's floating. Uh, this is um, a really thin branched, sparsely branched colonies are... Yeah, look at that, that it's missing um, some sa the same Ophiocantha is again missing uh, there's missing some, some missing tissue where the this associate is located on the top of that branch. Mm -hmm. So this is one of those cases where as I was mentioning yesterday, it's possibly not exactly commensal. There might be some slight detriment to these uh, corals because of just the, the spines that are um, uh, rubbing against the, the coral polyps and possibly uh, degrading the tissue and leaving it open to wounds or something like that. All right, a nice shot. So the damage to the coral from the brittle star isn't from predation, it's just a function of the brittle star's spines. That's like what I think. I yeah. mean, I've never, we, because we've never seen any of these ophiocanthids preying on coral polyps. They always have their arms in the, in the water and in, in the flow. Uh, Tritopura, Tritopura sponge on the left-hand side, that large stop sponge. That's gorgeous. Maybe actually, it might be something different. Looks like one. Very cloud, cloud-like puppy. So 
someone in the chat is wondering, what is your favorite shipwreck that you have explored? Have we explored more than one? We've explored so many. Yeah, true so, to Florida. So, so many. <laughs> I presume. Um, there's been some modern shipwrecks and some ancient shipwrecks. I haven't seen any of the modern ones, but the ancient ones were pretty amazing. Oh yeah, in the Mediterranean, right? Yeah, in the Black Sea, oh, in so the Aegean. Cool. Yeah. Would oh. you say those are your favorite? I guess I have, shipwreck-wise, I have nothing to compare them to. <laughs> 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 they are very cool, though. They they end up being these like piles of amphora on the bottom. So, like when ships sink go. to the when wooden ships sink to the bottom. They get devoured by wood boring organisms basically everywhere except for the Black Sea, where you do get some wood that sticks around. And in those cases, you see like the ribs and the planks of the ship and the mast, and that's pretty amazing. But in other places, they're just a pile of amphora, which are the containers that the trade goods were kept in. And uh, yeah, those are, those are pretty cool. Um, you can pretty much take them in. They're pretty small, like 10, 15, 20 meters long in total. So you can take them in pretty quickly just with a glance around the site. Um, but I feel like some people in the van have been around for some of the more modern wrecks. Is that possible, Samantha? Have you been? Have you seen any of the modern wrecks? Uh, yeah, a couple of them, mostly World War II era shipwrecks off the west coast of the U.S. Um, California and Washington. Um, yeah, we've we've done a bit of work out here in. Um, Closer to the Hawaiian Islands, also World War II era um, wrecks. And there will be a bit of, uh, there There may be um, some shipwreck exploration on the next expedition after this. Cool. Yeah. What are, they gonna, what are they thinking they might get to look at? That's a good question. Hmm. 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 I haven't read <laughs> the dive plan recently, or the cruise plan recently. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. uh, also, World War II era shipwrecks out in uh, Midway. So I would say. Battle of the Midway area. Yeah, I think yeah. we've looked at dozens of shipwrecks on go this boat. Please. Yes, definitely, definitely dozens. dozens. Um, actually, if you go to the Nautilus Live website under gallery, uh -huh. um, you can sort all of our uh, videos, photos, blogs by um, theme. And there's a couple of themes devoted specifically to shipwrecks. So if you really want to do a deep dive into all of the shipwrecks, all the plane wrecks that we've um, both uh, discovered and, and also explored known targets, um, there's quite a rich archive there. Cool. Yeah, I hadn't realized it was dozens that you all had explored. That's really cool. I really like the, the wreck of the Gulf Pen uh, from the Gulf of Mexico. It was sunk in World War II. Um, and it's absolutely covered in stony corals, Lophelia. Um, and if you look up uh, some notes about the Gulf Pen, I don't know if Nautilus is dove on it. I feel like it has uh, with Hercules. Bridge that. Huh? But uh, there's definitely been some other expeditions that have gone through there. Add another five zero, or, uh, move five zero meters, one, one five. Yeah. So one funny thing, as I was trying to go through my Rolodex in my brain of uh, go for some, please. <laughs> shipwreck expeditions, uh -huh. I'm having a hard time distinguishing between expeditions I was on and expeditions I watched from shore because <laughs> The experience of watching Nautilus Live is so similar uh, to the experience, you know, watching, let's say, from the lounge on Nautilus, that um, you really are on shore. You really do feel like you're part of the expedition. So <laughs> I was kind of struggling answering that question because I could think of a few that I wanted to bring up, then I realized I actually wasn't on the ship for those. Um, <laughs> but like watched so many hours cool. of the dives that it, it felt like I was there. So, An immersive you know, experience. Yeah, viewers around the world, it's not, it's, you know, we, we feel the same way about <laughs> being able to watch uh, expeditions remotely. Yeah. It does really feel like you're part of it. That's true. Yeah, there are definitely times um, when the other SCFs are talking about, you know, on my dive, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no, that was my dive. Or like, you, we get our own dives mixed up because. There's strangely dark sediments here. Yeah. Oh. 
Oh, oh. that's hello. Oh. Beautiful. Wow. It's like neon What are you calling this? The cheese moon? The cheese <laughs> looks like a cheese moon to me. Cheese moon. One of the other watches calls this the cheese moon. Go for zoom, please. I wonder why. But it's, ac it's actually not a moon. <laughs> wow. No way. Oh, thanks, Steve. Stop. But uh, wait, does that mean it's also cheese, then? It's a sponge station. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> was that Steve there, or did he get taken over by the coral again? <laughs> I think he was going for a Star Wars this reference. This is cool science. Oh, thank you. I thank you. Wow, it's so really yellow. Really interesting. Anybody with agoraphobia at home, I'm so sorry, but we're going to get a little closer. <laughs> this is uh, one of the larger, one, la larger ones I've seen. It's really interesting. Yep. Oh, that's a that's another. Oh, uh, okay. My grilled cheese shop is gonna have a, a sandwich <laughs> called oh, the, yeah. the Cheese Moon. <laughs> the Cheese Moon, I love that. And people are going to be like, "Oh, I love space stuff. I'll do that." And it's actually related to a sponge. Is that yeah. your idea? It's just gonna be a giant melted wheel of cheese. <laughs> oh, you should do uh -huh. this. Please. You should do raclette, which is a French dish um, where you have a big wheel of cheese and then you put it on the special heater made for the raclette and it drips yeah. down. And it becomes very smelly. Very smelly, very delicious. You sure. have pickles, mm -hmm. It's good for uh, It's onions, good for after bread. being outside tromping around in the Alps. So good. In, a, in, all, in all seriousness, <laughs> this is a bolasoma, <laughs> bolasomene sponge. Also known awesome. as the cheese moon. Nice shot. Yeah. <laughs> And yes, chat, you can bring cheese, a moon, and a cheese moon to the island. <laughs> <laughs> Go away, please. Hard hitting SBL today. Yeah, I feel like SBL really gets us. That's <laughs> <laughs> our better half. How long is this dive going to last? Excellent question. So we launched this dive at 4 p.m. Um, Hawaiian Standard Time. The dive itself we're expecting is going to be approximately 20 hours. Yeah, you could bring a cheese moon, but not a sea star. You can bring a sea jelly. So apparently it was my sister who wanted to bring oh the cheese wow. moon to the island. I like your sister a lot. Your yeah. sister has some really good ideas. She checks out. She's okay. She's okay. She's, She's alright. <laughs> I want her on my island. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> Her name's Nikki, so we can bring Nikki to the yeah, island. Yeah, Nikki and Gabby, come on over. Yep. If anyone is just joining us, by the way, we're playing a game. <laughs> uh, we started this game when we were in blue water. So I have an island that I am inviting people to, but they can only come if they have certain things. Can we look in this area? Yeah. There's some smaller colonies that are low contrast. Specifically looking at this one here. Yes. Go for zoom. Oh, this one or the one below? Oh, this one's Actually. fine. Okay. Yep, okay. So this is a primnoid. Oh, I want to say this looks like Marella. We'll save that for now. Might change my mind later. Okay. So my friends are watching Jamil and Guillaume. And yes, you can both come to my island.
Yeah, so we are using some lasers that you can see on channel one. We have two green lasers out there. And yeah, absolutely they are used for uh, scaling things to see how big or small they are. So they're spaced 10 centimeters apart. Still no good rocks, huh? Nope. You don't like any of these rocks? What about I that mean, one? yeah, I like it. Let's yeah, that it. one. This one. It's a little big. Uh, what do you think? Too I big. Mean, we are just starting. Steve? Um, we could put it in the starboard. It's got a good shape. Outboard side of the box, yeah. It's 25 to 30 centimeters. It'll definitely starboard. fit. We're in a good position for it. We're nice and stretched out. You can always drop it if you don't like it after yeah. picking it up. Tally ho! Tally -ho. We haven't changed much <laughs> elevation, <laughs> started, but it would be nice to get one. Yep. It's in the few minutes. Oh, for fuck's sake. Uh, one second. Okay, I will wait. seems like right now the hydraulics are struggling, so we may just like lift up as soon as I grab this. This is going to yeah. be large. This is going to be real large. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we also have the, the rock desizer on board. Mm -hmm. What's that? The rock desizer. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, Logan, uh, just wait a sec, uh, when Karen's got, uh, the vehicle where she wants it, then we can start doing that stuff. Okay, that's full down. Okay, cool. I might just be, like, teeter-tottering on yeah, a Yeah, like, on just, like, a little marble or something. I don't know why the vehicle's doing this, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's all good. Uh, okay, go for Zoom. Let me just get a bit closer. Yeah, that's okay. All right, that's full down on. I'm just okay. going to like do this manually. Okay, sounds great. Go for Zoom video. Nice. Your call. Is this the rock that you want? Can you rotate it a little bit? I sure can. Uh, go for Zoom video. Pressure's on, huh? <laughs> we'll take it. Okay. All right. Can we get one more spin? Yeah. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yep, okay. That's good. Okay. And it can go in the starboard bow box, E or F, the larger ones on the starboard side, either one. All right, Nick, we have some first time viewers that are chiming in here and they want to know why did you choose this rock? What's so special about it? Um, we're trying to get rocks from different depths uh, to see if the ages change uh, basically if, if, if we have an age that might be on the order of 10 to 20 million years or, or more uh, at different depths it'll, it might
give us uh, a clue that you might have some uh, resurgent volcanism, possibly um, overlying hot tra hotspot tracks, and just to get a general profile of the seamount itself. Excellent. So you were saying maybe like 10 to 20 million years? Is that what you were? Pos I mean, yeah, yeah, possibly, depending on when these hotspot tracks um, yeah. were overlapping each other. So earlier today, um, Nick was out on the back deck cutting rocks that we had collected from a previous dive, and uh, some other members of the team were out there, myself included. And it's really, really interesting being able to get these rocks from the seafloor, bring them up um, onto the ship, nice. and then cutting them open to nice. see what they look like on the inside. Very and nice. Yeah. Each rock has like a different interior. They're very beautiful. Yeah. Brown, what's our sample number here? And we like igneous 165. rocks the best. 165. Thank you. Is that the one that I had? <laughs> The one that had the, it had the, it had the teeny tiny, um, where you said it was a big olivine in it. Uh, that one is an interesting rock. Um, yeah. It did have a big olivine in it, but I, I still don't, I, I'm still confused it's about the origin of it. It's a mystery rock. It, it really kind of is. It had a green tint to it and kind of looked like How's it had the ship doing? Some, Are we, um, some sediment clasped. And that, the ship's actually stopped, so if you want to do something else here, it's a good, well, uh, it's not a good time because Argus, huh. or Adelaide is in front yeah. of her, but. Okay. Well, let me know when it's a good when time. When move, it could be a good time. Yep. All right. Somebody wants to know how long do we spend down on the floor each descent? It varies. Uh, so again, this dive, we're looking at about 20 hours. Um, earlier this cruise, I think we did one that was 12 hours. But generally, we want to keep it, it seems, for this expedition, we're keeping it in the 12 to 24 hour range. Yeah, we find that's right about right because the Ascent and descent times are a sign not an insignificant okay. portion of the total dive time. So if we were diving on the continental margin, for example, and we we're only diving to 500 meters or even 1,000 meters, uh, we could probably make do with 12-hour dives, for example. But um, yeah, we want to make sure we actually spend enough time on the bottom to adequately characterize the site. So Steve, what do you have in mind when we have uh, a moment to stop again? Um, just let me know when we're in in that space. Uh, I want to see what's in the area Roger. for potential biological collection that characterizes this uh, high density bamboo community. Okay, I think once Herc gets in front of Atalanta, sure. um, we'll be able to stop again. It'll probably be a snip and slurp type of thing. Mm. Roger. Great, I will clear out the slurp. Nice. Excellent question coming in in the chat. Uh, when we take rocks and other samples on board, how do we account for maintaining the neutral buoyancy for the ROVs? Um, so we actually, so Atalanta is thousands of pounds heavy in water. So it's not neutral, it's very negative. Um, Hercules is usually about, is slightly positive in water. Um, and uh, so like maybe 50 pounds positive in water um, so that in case something were to happen and we would lose the vehicle, the vehicle would float up as opposed to staying on the bottom. Um, but in order to maintain that positive 50 as we pull these rocks on, we actually have a bunch of weights, uh, steel plates that are attached to the porch of the vehicle and we can drop them. Uh, they might be like 16 pounds in water. Um, and so whenever we get close to having a neutrally buoyant vehicle, we drop a plate and then we become positive again. Excellent. And then a follow-up question also in the chat. Uh, they want to know how much weight can Hercules handle? Uh, I don't, I don't know. How, the Hercules' payload would be a matter of how much disposable ballast you could come up with to drop. If you wanted to go down to the seafloor and pick up something heavy, you'd have to be able to pitch that much weight off of the vehicle. Um, so right now, okay, uh, this is just back in the envelope, but like you might imagine we have four plates on right now. So that's like 64 pounds in water, if, I, if my guess of 16 pounds per plate is correct. Um, 
And we start to push that to the limit on engineering cruises where we have to take down big, big instruments and platforms and things like that. Um, and we find ways to pick up ballast and put it down on the seafloor, even stashing it for future dives where we could pick it up and put it down so we can continue to maintain the proper ballast on the seafloor as we move around big, heavy things. We actually have some numbers on the Nautilus Live website on this one. Um, it looks like the payload can be up to 250 pounds. Okay, cool. Which I didn't know. That's, we yeah. don't, that would not be something we'd be prepared for, like on a, yeah. we're not, we're not set up day. for that on this cruise, but yeah, I believe that for an engineering cruise. Yeah. Cool, thank you. All right, are we in a good position to maybe attempt yes. the sampling? Yeah, what do you have in mind? Okay, so uh, either this colony or this colony, they're the same thing. Okay. Uh, whichever one is easiest for you to set up on. Okay, I will go for the lefty one. This is the, the predominant, um, yeah, sparsely branched bamboo coral, Corretto acididae clade TBD. Brittany, I have a geology question for you. Oh no. Oh man. <laughs> Can I bring sillimanite to your island and not kyanite? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> How do you spell it? Okay. Are those uh, sillimanite? Yeah, they're aluminous uh, silica polymers. What was the second option? Kyanite. No. Kyanite? Neither of them will work. Uh, sillimanite. So you can bring oh, sillimanite, really? yeah. Yeah, you can, you can bring that, but not. Wait, how do you spell it? Yeah, how do you spell it? Uh, S I L L I M A N I T. Kyanite. K Y A. No kyanite on this island. And they both have the same chemical formula. Okay, um, Steve, yep. what are we looking for here? So we're going to take a branch, kind of cut there, maybe this one that's right in the middle, or the one on the side. It doesn't matter, but we're looking for a good uh, six to eight inches or so. It should be flexy. Okay. Not rigid. Go for zoom video. Oh, you know what? Uh, last minute, I changed my mind. If you can go for the left one, that might be better because it has a branch point. Okay. Let's shed some more light on the situation. failing me. Okay, so you want below the branching point? Yeah, maybe about ha halfway down uh, towards the base. Yep. Yeah, that right about there is good. I may be out of reach. Yeah. Just barely. Nice. Go wide. Second. Oh, beauty. I love all right. That. I am all stopped. Okay. Hopefully. Can you throw on downlight for me if it's not on? Yeah. Downlight is on now. Great. Just get the camera. Uh, I'm wondering if that actually might be too long for the slurp. Maybe we should go in the forward box. Okay. Okay. I'd have, rather than risk it getting fouled this early. Right on. Either side, Lambda or Omega.
Steve, our viewers want to know if it's possible to tell about how old this coral is that we're sampling. Great. That's awesome. Not visually, but there are methods that we can use to determine the age. Uh, there's a um, kind of like a dendrochronological dendro type approach, uh, similar to how uh, trees uh, lay down layers of um, wood over successive years. Corals lay down skeleton and successive rings over years. And so one of the methods we could use, for example, is to look at those different layers. But you would want to look at some tissue, um, or rather some uh, skeleton close to the base, which would re require taking the whole colony plus the base to make Very a nice. better approximation of that. Um, but again, it's super uh, taxon specific. So you'd have to look at different species and, and look at different uh, growth rates for example, across bamboo corals, because there might be different groups, right? it's just within that group. And even within a group, uh, across latitude, you might have very different growth rates as well, because of different food inputs, different energy supply. Mm -hmm. You want to swap up? Oh, yeah. Excellent. So it's not often done, because, um, you know, it, it is m it's more impactful um, to take a whole colony plus the base, if you can even get the base. Um, but it's very, very important research. It's just it's it's not practical to do using this kind of um, expedition yeah. uh, with our objectives here. Okay. Uh, so we have about an hour left of this watch. Again, we launched this dive uh, three hours ago. We're exploring uh, unnamed, excuse me, no, we're exploring the uh, northwestern edge of a uh, seamount. Excuse me, we're exploring a seamount in the northwestern edge of Johnson Atoll. Got there eventually. Um, our current depth is. 2,398 meters, and I believe we started at about 2,500. So we're just slowly making our way up. Science, is there anything else here that you're interested in taking a look at? I think we can. Uh, I, think, I think we can give it the beans and move on. Whoa! Full beans. Full beans. Beans. Right. Right. Full beans. Well, give it the full beans. Well, well. Steve's uh, saying that we uh, can go full <laughs> beans on this one. Full when beans. You're ready. Full beans. Full beans. <laughs> Can so I like hold me on three or one? Whenever you're ready. Is like okay, I, so yeah, get her gone. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Is that like ludicrous speed for the ROV? Yeah, ludicrous speed, get her gone, full beans. Bridge nap. Full beans. <laughs> <laughs> no ticks, backsies. Uh, five zero meters, ticks, one one five. What does that mean? Uh, <laughs> you can't change your mind immediately after saying that. Yeah, no, we, we yeah, the won't. Yeah, second, the second we no put this move back in. Seas. Nope. Bridge now, full beans. Martina will know exactly what that yeah. is, for sure. Well, I mean... <laughs> She's not good. She's been around for a while. Uh, no, I mean, uh, normal speed, but, I mean... At most, you can do, what, what, like half a knot across the seafloor? That's ludicrous speed. Uh, <laughs> that is not ludicrous speed. <laughs> <laughs> we have towed at much greater speeds. Are you wearing your sunglasses of gravitas <laughs> now? <laughs> this uh, anti-sunglass uh, atmosphere is very, very critical. Hostile. <laughs> it's pretty hostile, yeah. <laughs> Oh, nice sunset and wire cam. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Every time. Being Every in time. this room, I just, I always feel like it's nighttime it outside. It never fails. Gorgeous sunset, chill wow. free. So, Brittany, for our Dutch fans, because I feel like we had a lot of fans from the Netherlands the other day. Oh, that's cool. Are you telling me that I can bring Stroopwafel <laughs> and yeah. Bittewallen, but I, I no don't know about that second one. Croquette. 
<laughs> you don't know about the third one. Huh? <laughs> Wait, what? I would need them spelled. I know. <laughs> I'm over here like frantically googling. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. All of the above yes. sounds amazing. What, was, what were the other ones? Don't know how to spell them. Um, pizza ballin. What is that? <laughs> it's like fried. It's a ball of fried dough with deliciousness inside. Pizza, I'll say it that pizza way. Pizza ballin. Bitta ballin. Bitta ballin. Yeah. B i t t. Okay. Yeah, you can bring that. Thank you. And then what was the third one? Croquette. But it has to be the Dutch croquette, because you can bring the English croquette. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh. All right, sure. Sweet. <laughs> can I bring green schist, but not blue schist? <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, oh uh, yeah, green schist, but no not blue schist. No, green. schist is allowed as long as it's green schist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, green yeah. schist, but not blue schist. Not blue schist. Nice. Uh, which are both metamorphic But you're reaching your, your nice. rock threshold. Nice. You have yeah. I have to do <laughs> geology. <laughs> you have to bring something other than rocks. Come on, I'm just going to be rocks. rocks. <laughs> I'm just going to be rocks. Come you on. have to live a little. Oh, what else would you need? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently Nick can eat his rocks. So. Yeah, here. that's true. It doesn't look like it, but it's happening. Is it? Yeah. Well, you have to let us know in the next 50 minutes or so what the rules are. For this island. Oh, Why? Why in the next 15 minutes? Fif 50. 50. Oh, okay. 50. Oh. Yes, I shall. I shall. I, uh, you know what, Steve? Have I thought you, you had it, Steve. Writing any data down? I, I actually just don't really pay attention <laughs> to the game. I'm just <laughs> guessing <laughs> random things. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, Gabby is like basically begging you to just Gabby, write it down. Yeah, Gabby gave you a strong hint <laughs> yeah. like multiple times. That's okay, I'm not really paying attention anyway. I'm kind of focused on That's the, fair. the mission we're doing on the seafloor yeah. here. Oh, right. Steve, you can oh. bring By the way, mission. you can bring a mission if you want. Mission is allowed. <laughs> and oh. your sass. And the floor. And your sass. And your sass. <laughs> we're going, we've been going downhill just like slowly for a little while. We have We're, we're going uphill, but we're going downhill too. <laughs> oh boy. And gently. It's a gentle downstairs. <laughs> I've been informed. Are we talking it's about mentally uh, or the stuff? <laughs> <laughs> that we're going for. <laughs> yeah, Fall we're going to fall beans. Oh my gosh. Okay, I have questions coming in. Rightfully so. Um, <laughs> when oh, yeah, you nice. open bio boxes, water fills them. Yes, that's true. So do things float out? The answer is yep. not really. 69 million years? Uh, if, <laughs> if you've planned ahead, they don't, fall, they don't float out. But there's yeah. a few... I can't tell those. There's a few things that don't want to be in bio boxes. Yeah. Starfish will climb out. Um, uh, black corals can be neutral, so if you are moving at all when you open them, the black corals will come out. And apparently, tunicates are super buoyant. <laughs> yeah, we we, 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 we wouldn't know that uh, necessarily. We never opened the box. That's true. Uh, that's true. That's true. Our watch wouldn't know that. But other um, people that I have to face at work do know that. <laughs> <laughs> have to face at work. Speaking of the tuna kit, can you please give our viewers an update, the ones who have just joined us recently, about what you've discovered about that collection from yesterday? The tuna kit? Yeah. Uh, we still don't have an idea on it, but we've put out some um, contacts, some, some images to some contacts to try and find the few people on Earth who probably study tunicates, and especially deep sea tunicates. Um, it's not as easy as Googling, you know, what is this gelatinous looking uh, strange, you know, mass thing. Yeah. Um, so there's a little bit of work involved. And another really good question. Yeah, so we are exploring around Go Johnston presume. Atoll, which at one point um, in its history oh, did have some nuclear get, testing get going on. And so here. they're wondering if we're seeing any evidence of that or if it impacts our dives at all. Uh, I, I was oh, spacing okay. out a little. No, it's all right. Yeah, um, so nuclear testing that occurred at Johnston um, many years ago, are we seeing any evidence of that around the dives that we are? We wouldn't know. We don't yeah. really carry the tools to do that kind of work. Uh, and we're, we're still quite far away. No Geiger counters on the ROV? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Yeah. 
So we're not at Johnson Atoll proper. We're still, as, as Steve mentioned, pretty far away. These um, are colophagus sponges. Still kind of uncertain if this is okay, a, a branch sponge. It's used to probably just multiple branches of a single sponge or maybe secondary settlements on, a, on one branch or one stalk. And then what have we seen at the surface from the ship? Any whales? No, I have been <laughs> definitely watching. But yeah, I haven't seen any whales. Uh, we saw dolphins when we left Oahu uh, the very first day of our expedition, and that was August 2nd. Plenty of birds. Bronwyn can probably tell you about some, some of the birds that we've been seeing. Yeah, we've been seeing uh, mainly red-footed boobies, some brown boobies. Uh, I think at least on albatross. Right. Dead sponge. Uh, wedge tilt shear water. There is something off to the right, if we can. Okay. Some Either turns. pan or zoom out and come back in. Bridge, no? A long, wiry, unbranched coral. Go wide. Uh, five zero meters, uh, one five. Oh. Oh, I, I missed see. it. Look right there. Oh. Well, okay. I think either of those. Yeah. Here's the close one. We'll yeah, the close, the close one, one was. And the red-tailed tropic bird, which I was most excited about. And they're known to be one of the largest nesting colonies on Johnson Atoll proper. Oh, cool. Stop there. Yeah. I think that's the coral we just sampled. OK. Go ahead. It's a funny place to sit down because we're uh, going downhill, so the back end of the vehicle sets down first. Yep, we don't we don't have to sit down. Makes we can do this on the fly. Oh yeah, even yeah, just makes it funny to try and zoom even. Okay, go zoom. Stop there. Okay, uh, that's good back here. Okay, go away. So we have somebody joining um, the chat who's an illustrator, an illustration student. And they want to know what sea beasts do we wish got more love in art? Oh. Sea cucumbers. Sea cucumbers, says Steve. Chrysogorgia. Chrysogorgia. <laughs> Honestly, chitin. Go for zoom. What was that, Logan? Chitin. Chitin. Yeah. Oh, chitin are cool. Yeah. I think chitin are really cool. Sorry, that's my Colorado accent. I don't say T's in the middle of words. <laughs> <laughs> mountains aren't mountains, Red they're mountains. Species? No. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Um, okay, go on. Speaking of illustrations, if you've been watching for a while, you might have heard Steph, who is our other science communication fellow. She has a really, really, really awesome um, website where you can see her beautiful artwork. So you could check it out. Steph, S-T-E-P-H, Weinger, W-E-I-N-G-E-R, dot com. And she's a very, very talented illustrator. And um, if you watch her space, I'm sure she's going to be posting um, some of the really amazing animals that we've seen so far on these dives. So you can check that out. Another couple groups that really don't get a lot of attention are uh, microbes. And uh, while not animals, they're really important for cycling nutrients and energy in the deep sea and also storing carbon uh, and sequestering carbon into the deep sea floor. Um, nice, another bamboo coral there. It might also be the same colony we sampled. Seems to be branching at the right spots. Um, and then uh, it, tunicates. I mean, 
you just hardly, hardly ever pe hear people talk about tunicates these days. <laughs> it's true. I mean, yeah, diatoms are really, really pretty. Oh, yeah. I get the sense that there's probably a lot of art done with diatoms, but still, really Diatoms gorgeous. are like their own art. Yeah, that's yeah. Like you are. get a microscope and like start taking like polarized photos of them, it's unbelievable. Yeah, very gorgeous. Any chance we can zoom for just an associate yeah. view of the bottle brush here? Very nice shot. And the cinnamon. Oh, yeah. The good old cinnamon can. Cinnamon. Can. cinnamon. <laughs> Which can I'm going to try and do hand. some macro imagery if you could give me a few seconds. To, the, the zoom is quite slow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've, got, I've got time. Oh, there's quite lobster. Oh, they have two. You've got a baby on the bottom and no way, an adult really? in the middle. Yeah, this is amazing. Really nice shot. Okay, we got good cinnamon. <laughs> so I was looking at some of the published ages around this area, and it looks like uh, Johnston Island, maybe just south of it, was uh, dated to be around 71 million years old. Wow. Uh, some of the surrounding areas are a little different, though. We have 93 million uh, just north of us, uh, 81 million to the east, 85 million to the south. Uh, these are all published in 2002, and there have been um, ages that have been published since then. But uh, just to give you an idea of, of how scattered the ages are in this area uh, and how critical it is to kind of resolve the seamounts, uh, the seamount tracks. Is so Johnston well constrained, or is it? Um, what's the margin of error or the I, deviation? I don't, I don't have the margin um, itself right now, but. Um, might have somebody chime in on that. So, well, generally, maybe when you do age of rock, what kind of ranges might you expect? Uh, um, let's see, I've seen, I mean, ranges of air go as high as 10 million, um, which is not great, uh, but it still can be within the range of air. Uh, typically, you want to go less than that. Um, I, w I would say maybe five. Bridge, no? Two to five. Five zero meters, one one So some questions are coming in. Is this the last dive in this series? Um, no, we do plan on diving a little bit more as our expedition is coming to a close. Oh my gosh. So our last um, our last day is going to be August 29th, and then we're going to, at least some of us are going to be getting off the ship, and then the next group is coming on to explore the Papahanao Mokuakea um, area. So we still have a few uh, dives to go before we disembark. It's actually an entire uh, science team turnover, except for Rennie, unfortunately. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, so most of us then, the yeah. vast majority of us. It's 30 people. Yeah. Any, uh, any, anything you're not going to take back home with you? you know, cruise wellness supplies, definitely. <laughs> Leave for Rennie. Yeah. Yeah, normally it's more than that, but... Yeah. <laughs> Did he get in on the uh, snack swap today? <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. I didn't see him there. And this is a really oh, good a, question. This one's polyopagon, I think. I think that might be a new record for the dive so far. I love this question. If we could clarify what is an associate in marine biology. Excellent. Yeah, associates, uh, uh, yeah, it's kind of a loose term. Uh, it, it doesn't really have a lot of ecological significance, but it's a term we use when we're unclear of the role that two species 
have together. Um, so, for example, brittle stars associate with corals, but also some other species associate with corals, like um, parasites and it's, you? Uh, you know parasitic organisms, like maybe anemones or zoanthids, zoantherians. So it's it's a little tough to tell exactly what the relationship is. So we use the term associate to link those two uh, species together, so that we can maybe better describe them as we get more data. Yeah, great clarification. And excellent question again. Do we have cool mission patches uh, that are designed for our expeditions? Oh. Maybe an illustrator could make some of those. I'm so glad you mentioned that. Yeah, so we actually do have patches and stickers that go for each expedition um, or for each year. Bridge up. And those are actually designed uh, by Could you students. replace move with five zero meters, one five zero? So students ages 5 to 18, they can submit their original artwork, and then um, one gets selected, and that gets uh, made into our official patch or sticker or emblem for the entire season. I didn't know that. That's very interesting. Can we really drop cool. um, uh, a placeholder waypoint in the middle of this depression to saddle and call it 1A? Uh, right here, where my yeah, that's yeah, some, somewhere around there. I just want to use it for reporting purposes because we have a very long distance between one and two. Great. Yeah, we do. Brittany, can I bring hemichorallium coral and also <laughs> mushroom coral to the island? You can bring hemichorallium, yes. And you can also bring mushroom. Got him. Got him. <laughs> yeah, Somebody sorry, you, sorry you couldn't bring your bananas, but you can bring those. That's fine. It's okay. I understand now. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Have we stumbled upon Ocean's drain plug yet? Nope. <laughs> if we did, I don't think any of us would want to pull it. That'd be catastrophic. The ocean plug? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, this is a good chance to talk about how uh, the crust is porous and water can move freely in and out of the crust, right? That's right. Yeah, it tell sure us about that. Wow. It sure Go can. on. We'll That's see more. cool. Yeah. So, in fact, there's actually a lot of holes in the bottom of the sea. Yep. Uh, micropores. Um, water travels through the rocks. They. That's what causes the alteration in the rocks. Um, low temperature alteration, uh, seawater alteration, so it's like, you know, between zero and 15 degrees, I would say. Um, and uh, yeah, higher higher temperatures, you're gonna find around hydrothermal vents and uh, you'll have a little bit of different interaction between seawater and rocks. Uh, actually, uh, white smokers will be a little bit lower in temperature than you go up to black smokers with uh, even higher temperature. So it's a fun exchange between seawater and, and pore spaces and rocks. This might be a very silly question, but would water ever be able to make its way all the way into the core? So, I don't know about the core, but there is some prevailing hypotheses, competing hypotheses, that at the upper mantle and lower mantle transition, that there is a collection of uh, descended um, tectonic slabs, some of them uh, get stuck there, some of them penetrate all the way down to the, to the core mantle boundary, and, they, and the, the idea is that it, in this transition zone at about 660 kilometers where you have a seismic discontinuity, that there is an ocean's worth of water there. No um, way. Yeah. Uh, of nice. course, it's not liquid. Uh, it's, it's in dissolution at that point, um, that and carbon dioxide. It's in it's in what? It's in dissolution, so it's 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 kind of dissipated within the material itself. Okay. That's really cool. It's not in a liquid state. Uh, it is in a liquid state, but it's not it's not a separate liquid, I should say. So I'm hearing that Journey to the Center of the Earth was still accurate then. <laughs> oh yeah, that that movie holds up today actually. Okay. 100%. Good. Glad we covered that.
<laughs> Most importantly, during the time of the Earth. <laughs> I'm like, I don't remember them going through a water layer. <laughs> it's fascinating to me, though, like the different borehole projects that have yeah. tried to drill. Like, that's utterly fascinating to me. Yeah. And they haven't gotten close to Yeah, the drill bits the have crust. melted and, yeah. yeah. I mean, the possibility okay, of, of reaching the upper mantle is slim to none, and getting, you know, to the core is impossible. I don't think it'll will ever be able to get anywhere near the core, um, or even the core mantle boundary uh, at 2,800 kilometers. Um, wow. Yeah, the, the, the heat and temperature pressure, it, it's just too intense um, to even, even break the lithosphere. It's just, you know, it's just really, really an interesting idea how someone got funded a project that said, we're just going to drill a hole mm -hmm. as deep as we can possibly go That's to right. the middle of the earth. And the best place to <laughs> do it would be in the oceanic crust since it's a lot thinner yeah. typically than continental crust. Yeah. In the name and of science. In the name of science. I also heard I need to read more into it, but talking about like a sinkhole, um, scientists recently discovered a like gravitational hole in the Indian Ocean, like a Go weird yeah. gravitational phenomena. Yeah, there's a few gravitational phenomenons. Um, there's two large ones that are pretty well known and understood. One of them uh, is actually correlates with the South Pacific Superswell, that area in the South Pacific that I was telling you about. Um, and it's also overlain by an area called Sopita, okay, which is a Chris south species with uh, something uh, Pacific isotope Probable anomaly. squat lobster. Uh, another seismic anomaly is under closer. Africa. Um, no, that, let's let's keep going. It's getting a little bit. Tr it's transitioning to some other type of seafloor. Okay. That's including a little bit more sediment with bioturbation and these ripples. I wanted to poke around here a little bit more. A little bit oh, of an, a little bit of an ecotone. Urchin, cup coral, anemone, something. Go for zoom. I hope it's an urchin. We haven't seen one of those in a while. Yeah. Anemone. Anemone. Uh. Tough to tell. It, it looks like it could be a Cerianthurian uh, tube anemone. Uh, but they're actually not anemones. Oh, okay, go in. Um, 165. But it's tough to tell because you have to identify two different separated rows of tentacles. Uh, but that it's on the sediment, it could be in a tube buried, uh, but it doesn't have to be. Some some anemones sit right on the surface. Well, this is a much better direction to go. Great. Uh, just because I'm not fighting like a yep. current like this. Yep, perfect. I nice. love it. I'm wondering what happened to the rat tails we were seeing. I felt like we were seeing one every like three minutes and then all of a sudden we haven't seen any for a while. So. Yeah, I think there was just a um, really strong influence that uh, we, we landed on the slope of a topographic high point, like a little cone um, now to the west of us, which had a much higher density of corals and sponges. Yeah. Likely due to better flow Canadian conditions, Atlanta, a one five zero and heading. we have moved away from that, and we're now entering a saddle between two topographic highs. And as we move through here, we s suspect it will start to get a little bit more sedimented, perhaps. Um, Lovely. Yeah, Logan, uh, like I was saying, those thermal thermal, thermal anomalies are uh, modeled to represent um, hot upwellings uh, near the core mantle boundary, uh, where we see a lot of uh, uh, mantle plume like upwellings near what's called low, large low shear velocity provinces. Uh, and that's based all off of seismic imagery and um, as well as chemical sampling of rocks thought to have been sourced by those uh, regions. Interesting.
Sediment, no nuggets. No nuggules. No nuggies. As of yet. Are you getting into the saddle a little bit? Yeah, I would say we're there. We're on the, the northern side of it. On the 2400 meter isobath-ish. 2410. Speaking of nuggets, did we... Um Okay. We, Nick, did you cut any of the nuggets from the previous dive, and were uh, any we, of them any good? We did. Um, most of them looked like they were like um, glassy hyaloclastites um, with a phangomanganese, ferromanganese coating. Um, on previous dives, we cut some open, and they were actual just very small basalts. Um, so the uh, mystery remains yeah. unsolved. You never know. I wonder what the uh, diversity of nuclear material, you know, the material that that you know is the nucleus for nodules to form. Is that homogeneous or is it variable? That's a good question. I mean, uh, I haven't studied uh, ferromanganese personally. I'm, I'm more I deal with the, with the basalt core um, and kind of stay away from them. But uh, I'm not right. sure. That's a good question. Uh, five zero meters, one five zero. I wonder if any of these rocks might be good to grab. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you read my mind. Uh, it's not hard to read. <laughs> You're a pretty open spot, book. Spot, <laughs> spot, spot. It's um, also usually one thought. What about, what about <laughs> Nothing this too big, one? This one. Wow. It's like you've done this before. Uh-huh. Uh, yes, for yeah. real? Yeah. Okay. I'll never say no to a rock crab. Okay. What's that? Yeah, go for it. Uh, let me get you some lights and cameras and action. Nice. Snack. It's a nice curling stone. <laughs> Subrounded. <laughs> Subrounded. Um, the uh, view in uh, Atalanta is pretty cool yeah, right now, I as like far it. as like understanding where things go on the vehicle when we have to put them away. Okay. Yep. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That Starboard is. bow box. One of the uh, port smaller boxes. Smaller boxes. It's mm. Fifteen. Twenty. No. <laughs> Ten to fifteen. Say it's <laughs> Yeah, in the 15 to 20 range, maybe on the lower end of that uh, interval. Centimeters. Someone in the chat said, no, not that rock. That's the plug. It's <laughs> <laughs> really funny. It's really horrifying. <laughs> you made a big the mistake. The ROVs start to run. I know. Oh, jeez. All yeah. right. Hi, Megan. Good to see Any you. Any of the small boxes? Yep. All right. So somebody's asking about... I, I don't think that's going to fit. Yeah, put it in uh, F then. You see, that's fine. They look very different. Oh. Okay. That's um, 167. One six seven I. All right. Does anybody know about a cruise where you discovered a helicopter engine? Oh, what's going on there? It's not really helicopter a helicopter engine. 
Not ringing a bell. All we right. We definitely found engines from planes. Um, but not really ringing any bells. No. All right. If it comes to any one of us, we'll let you know. Whoever asked that question in the chat. Um, and then, yeah, somebody wants some clarification on what makes a good rock for a rock grab. So shape, texture, etc. Not attached to the seafloor. Not attached that, to the seafloor. That's usually helpful. That's, um, yeah, generally not a good squishy. Is, not is squishy. Good. Okay. Um, <laughs> Check. Yeah. Not the plug. Not the plug. Not the plug. <laughs> I guess we're looking for fresh basalt that is, you know, kind of an angular shape. So it's kind of indicative of not of not being too much too weather weather too much. Um, not too much seawater alteration was what I'm trying to say. Uh, but again, we won't find that out until we cut them open. So. Uh, and yeah. the best rocks also have bonus symbols like biology yeah. attached to them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're coming. We're so yeah, we'll be coming uphill now. Um, also, can you go wide on Atalanta video? Yep. That's okay, wide. That's it. Great, beautiful. Yep. That was a cool zoom. I like that. Yeah, I'll do that a little bit more if that's okay with y'all. Yeah. Whenever you're kind of yeah, settled yeah, and not I, worrying as much about it. Yeah, I love I love watching sampling in Atalanta. I think that's super cool. Cool. Yeah, I highlighted that. That was really. That was a really cool video. It's interesting to see the arm rotate around mm -hmm. like a little. It's weird because like the arm is so similar to our own arms until you get to that point. Yeah. <laughs> and I always feel yeah, like I just that. the biggest like discomfort with sampling into the <laughs> in the starboard bio box. It just feels like trying to like put something in these like little tiny fiddly boxes behind my back, even mm. though like I have two views of it. Yeah. It just feels like your arm's going the wrong way. Yeah. It just get a little weird. pain in your elbow. Yeah. <laughs> Gabby, that's a really good point. I mean, I, I can't see you right now. There's a screen in front of me, so I don't ever see what it looks like for you when you're placing that sample in those boxes, but I can imagine it'd be quite awkward. It it shouldn't look awkward. We have all the tools we need, and it's just like a sort of mental block about like it being in this weird, not in front of me place. <laughs> yeah. Okay, go ahead. So we have a question, if, um, after you grab a rock, what types of things will you be sampling? What are your baseline tests? Does it change expedition by expedition, or is there a universal set? That's okay. the question. Um, it doesn't change too much for the kind of work that uh, I'm doing back at uh, uh, the geochronology lab at UNLV. Uh, so we're trying to separate out mineral separates, like biotite, amphiboles, and calcium-rich plagioclase, uh, peroxines even, uh, uh, separate those out and send them to uh, a nuclear facility for irradiation and run them back in a mass spectrometer at UNLV uh, to uh, record some age determinations. Um, we also like to better understand the chemistry of the rocks themselves. Um, so even though we kind of have an idea that they're basalts, given the terrain and the nature of ocean basins, basins uh, we still want to know whether they might be a, like a foliatic basalt or an alkaline basalt, uh, the different type of subgenres you can, you can say with uh, the basalt family. Uh, so we'll send uh, f some samples to uh, okay, a different lab to do some type of spectro spectrometry, spectroscopy, uh, whether it be XRT or ICPMS. Uh, and that'll give us uh, the chemical data that we need to uh, look at the major and trace elements. So mostly we're uh, looking for uh, ages, for major elements, and trace zero. elements to kind of uh, really understand what's going on with the samples themselves. So. Okay, so priority for you is how old is the rock? That's number one priority. Got yeah. it. Yeah. And then the chemistry kind of gives us a little like background information. Okay. I just now realize that there are different types or different kinds of basalt as you were explaining that like I just yeah. thought basalt yeah. is basalt and that's it yeah uh, they, they can be broken down into into like I said um, 
ocalic, which is what we often see um, in these uh, hotspot drive seamounts, uh, depending on the stage um, of eruption. Um, Mid-ocean ridges, you'll have uh, what we call tholeitic basalts, which is just you know slight variation in compositions. Um, but yeah. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Very interesting sediment in this area, this dive site. It's not. Uh, there's a lot more darker material. Yeah. And I'm wondering if that's because of our proximity to the atoll. It could be. Yeah. It's yeah. More si uh, more yeah, silica. Si yeah. As opposed to carbonate, maybe. Maybe more biogenic. Go for zoom. You know, organic rich sediments too. Sure. Uh, so this is a an anemone. Okay. Go away. Sorry. So that was a real anemone, not one of those tricksters. The Syrianthereans, yeah, then no, the, it lacked um, a second row of tentacles around the mouth. Yeah. Uh, which indicates it's an anemone. I would like but to But trying to tell them apart on the seafloor yeah. uh, in different anemone species is very difficult. Can we Go look? For zoom? Yeah, thank you. You read my mind. Chrysogorgid with associates. Associates, yep. <laughs> it's the same species we've been seeing, uh, this <laughs> bottle brush morph. Uh, I would call it the same one we've already sampled also on previous dives, this short, stubby bottle brush, maybe no more than 15 to 20 centimeters in height. Um, but it's usually present with one or two. Um, Europe Tychus uh, squat lobsters. All right, Nick, we're uh, getting some questions in the chat. Would you mind elaborating on what exactly is basalt? Yeah, so a basalt is a rock uh, with, uh, like I said before, mafic composition, sometimes ultramafic. Uh, so a lot of olivine, a lot of pyroxene. Um, uh, it's an extrusive rock or a volcanic rock, which means that it erupted at the Earth's surface as opposed to within a magma chamber. And uh, I was kind of mentioning gabbro earlier. Gabbro is uh, the same chemical composition and mineral composition as basalt, except for it is the intrusive version. Uh, and it has very large coarse grains, similar to granite. Um, uh, where granite being, you know, more of a uh, evolved rock, Go for zoom. if you if you will. So, um, okay, stop there. But yeah, it's a it's a mafic rock, uh, probably one of the most common rocks you'll find on the Earth's surface, uh, since it it literally covers the entire ocean okay, basin. Okay, go wide. Great, thank you. Uh, cool. So their densities seem to be climbing again. I wonder if that's because we're kind of on the uh, coming around the backside of this topographic high, or maybe there's some channeling the current's of currents picking up. Yeah, between these uh, these local highs um, on either side of waypoint 1A. So that's interesting to note. Um, now, in the next five minutes or so, could you get me a distance traveled since the start of our on bottom? Just thinking. Can I give you a diagonal? Or do you want the full track? Sure. Well, there's a little wiggle here. We'll, we'll round it up. Go for zoom. Stop there. Two sponges here, this uh, yellow bolosoma and uh, tritopleura. Probably the two most common sponges we've seen at this site. Okay, go ahead. 
Steve, uh, 530 meters, 530 meters, and we were on bottom at uh, 0350. I so forgot to mention, two Brittany, hours. Uh, basalt is also an igneous rock. It's very important cool. to mention. It's igneous is bliss. <laughs> igneous is nice. Oh. Mm -hmm, like that. Okay. I once taught my mom to play backgammon with <laughs> fake face, uh, felsic and mafic rocks because we didn't got the backgammon board when we went backpacking. Nice. They're different colors. Yeah. That's awesome. Nick yeah. is so proud of himself back here. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Is it time? It's time. It's time. It's time. It's don't do it. Uh -oh. Don't do it. Oh. <laughs> That's Nick. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> Nick, are you sure you're not a dad? <laughs> the jokes are so good. Smart cam for the win. Smart cam. Give us a smile. Uh, five zero <laughs> we'll meters, one four zero. I'll give you your freedom. <laughs> I must, uh, I'm, I'm imagining geologists are probably pretty good scrubble players. <laughs> so oh my gosh, yeah. Do you think the minerals words. are on the scrabble, uh, <laughs> yeah, scrabble yeah, a lot dictionary? Of words. That's a good question. I'm sure you can play something like I mean, Felsic or Mafic. You can, you'd have to argue it, you know? You know, like, yeah. hey, listen, that's it. What's I mean, same thing species names. What's a scrabble names, game without a good argument, can you, you can't use for <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> You can't use Latin. Oh. Right? Oh, really? Oh, uh, no, I don't think you can. What about obscure common names? <laughs> <laughs> Go for zoom. Yeah, can we zoom there? Thank you. All right, no, so ups, that's, Did that's I zoom to something. The right place, yeah, that's though. perfect. Stop there? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I still think it's the same coral we've been seeing. Um, there's another coral that looks like that, but has slightly different. Um, polyp arrangement called Aconella um, Weberi in this area, and it's not that. So this is the same kind of crado I said that we sampled earlier. Very sparse branching, but low branching, and then um, very long branches with very uh, sparse or or no branching. Right. So we have um, just about 15 minutes left of this watch before this group here in the control van switches out and the 8 to 12 watch or the 8 to 12, 12 crew takes over. And again, we are exploring an area in the southwest region of, or excuse me, the northwest region of Johnson Atoll. And Steve, some people in the chat are wondering. Why Johnston Atoll? Why are we, what's so special about this area? So we're pretty much dead center now uh, in the center of the Atoll uh, at what's called the Exclusive econ Economic Zone, which is an area around 200 nautical miles around um, Johnston Atoll. And uh, this area is also uh, one unit of the Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monument uh, it's one of five units along with uh, Wake Island, uh, Howland and Baker Island, uh, Kingman Reef and Palmyra, and Jarvis Island. And these are uh, five large uh, U.S. monuments that are basically have certain protections afforded to them, um, which include, you know, n no taking of, of, of um, like, for fishing, um, and marine resources like that. All activities have to be permitted that go on in these monuments, including ours. Um, it's a sanctuary for birds, at least on land and other uh, land species. Um, and so the resources are kind of jointly managed by um, different uh, different uh, entities of the government, including Fish and Wildlife and uh, and NOAA. Uh, another of, yeah, this is very similar to the heteropathies we sampled yesterday or very recently. Got what you need, Dana? Yep. Okay, go on. And so our goal out here is to basically uh, explore the unexplored areas of the Pacific Rhode Islands Marine National Monument around Johnston Atoll. Um, we're primarily focused on seamount communities and seamount environments, um, many of which have been mapped in this area, but some of them have not. We've mapped uh, uh, probably four or five seamounts uh, in their entirety almost uh, since we've been out here, uh, just in between our dives. 
or, or, or during uh, weather breaks, weather periods. And during the uh, during these dives, we're really interested in characterizing both the geological composition of the seafloor and uh, biodiversity on the seafloor in these areas. So this includes you know, visual observations, what we're doing right now, as well as sampling opportunistically for rock samples and uh, uh, voucher specimens of biological um, species that might represent new, uh, new species for an area, um, new records, uh, or have interesting, unique symbioses um, with other species that might improve or amplify biodiversity patterns across the seamount landscape. So speaking of sampling... Oh, can, uh, on the bottom of the screen, there's something there, if you have time. Good. There's so something red right there. Maybe it, it might be an opioid, it might be something else. Just caught my eye. Looked a little strange. Yeah, I see it. I just got to fight with the vehicle a little bit here. We've got Go for zoom. eight meters left on this move. Do okay. we want to keep moving for the watch change or? Settle down. It's like a sea star? Looks like it. Oh, uh, yeah, it's a brittle star. Yeah. star. Okay, go ahead. Um, <sighs> we can we can do either. We can Sci keep, yeah, yeah, yeah science, is there anything here that you're interested in taking a look at or getting a rock? Uh, I'm good. Um, so much for that idea. Maybe. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> trying to outsource this decision. <laughs> well, I mean, if you have to uh, do a watch change, you might as well. Might as well grab right. a rock. Not, not, or, or anything else. I mean, the move is ending, so now is, now is the time. It wouldn't be the worst look thing to... Look at all these falls from these rocks over here. Can you just look at that over real quick? Oh, yeah. I don't want to grab any. I just want to look at those. Oh, there's our friend Semperilla, which is indicative of these small pebble communities. Hey, you see these like little slides almost over here yeah what's up with that i don't know well really weird really cool sand the dunes is what you're looking at yeah yeah, yeah. Those are, cool. Very cool. are they dunes or are they yeah maybe they look uh like yeah wave yeah so would we be on the lee side or the stop side so the current's coming from the uh from the port of the vehicle right now okay so that's the the east Really cool. Thank you. Okay, Steve, I think you had something you wanted to look at over here? Um, not really. We kind of entered the nod nodule nuggets and uh, kind of lost it, but that's all right. Are we interested in a push for our scoop? Um, you know, I'll, I'll just wait a couple minutes uh, and leave it for the next watch to decide that. Okay. Um, actually, right here, there you go. Yeah. That's kind of the thing I was hoping to see. Okay, ship's holding position, and I think we'll leave it here because great. we'll let you get ahead anyway with uh, Mark. This may be the least spicy handover. <laughs> We're headed downhill. That's not ideal. <laughs> Something. <laughs> Can't use two fingers on the telescope. No, I know it works like Go that. Go for zoom. You got to use some of these <laughs> not other. Not ideal isn't exactly spicy, though. <laughs> spicy. <laughs> oh, what is that? What? What is that? Okay, we need to collect some of this. Okay, great. Nice. Okay, zoom out. <laughs> yep. I, get in there. I actually did, just did, did a spit take with my water. Did, <laughs> <laughs> did you just put in a move? Is that why? No. It's just after all the deliberation. <laughs> no, no. Th this, this I've never seen before. I can tell that from um, the reaction. I've seen something like this in the Eastern Pacific, but not here. Well, that's very exciting now. What do you, what Anyone do you want to guess what it is? Uh, Paragorgia, white Paragorgia. Paragorgia. White Victor Gorgia. Oh my gosh, you're bouncing I've never seen your seat. Kitty Steve. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Kitty Steve. What, what is it, Steve? Okay. Uh, what, can we image it first, yeah, before we yep. go in for the yeah. clipping? I'm not sure how this is going to respond um, because I've never seen this one here before. Uh, but 
I think away. it might pull up off the rock. It may not. Uh, it might be firmly attached, but we'll need to get a, a good size clip. Any other guesses? <laughs> uh, Data, do you have what you need here? Mm -hmm. Okay, go wide. All right, we can go in for a clip. We're probably, okay. I need to given the size here. of it, we'll probably have to go for like this is half. Because I'm tail uphill. And the chat thinks it might be a current. sponge. The chat is very wise. Oh. Ooh. What? Wow. No. That's a sponge. Way Steve. to go, chat. This explains why Steve is bouncing. You're bearing the lead here. <laughs> Steve? What's up? Steve? <laughs> <laughs> we lost him. Bueller? <laughs> Bueller. Well, this is interesting. Um, I haven't even had a chance to look through the, the guide for this region, but I don't think there's anything like this. Very cool. So are we thinking SNP and BioBlox? Depends on how much SNP we get, I think. Brittany, are you going to reveal your secret? How much I, I can. This is all like, all this excitement all in the last 10 yeah, minutes. I know. It's kind of... I know. I, don't, I wonder if the chat's dying to know. That's what happens. <laughs> Perfect timing. Um, yeah, so to come on my island, you need to bring items that have two letters that are the same back to back. So you can bring an apple, you can bring a pineapple, you can bring uh, Skittles. So we can bring Steve, but not Steve? You can bring, yeah, exactly. So that's how you get on my island. You all are welcome to come now that you know my secrets. So, yeah, this is, we're doing a watch change right now. So Steve is explaining to the other scientists who are uh, just no, now coming to yeah, take I'll, the I'll 8 to 12 it. watch. Um, but it does appear that Steve is very, very excited about this uh, potential sponge. So hang tight and the next group, 8 to 12, will do some more explaining. And also the tunicate, I do see that you all are asking about that as well. So again, the 8 to 12 watch would be able to cover that and give you more details about that tunicate. Um, Paula is taking over, very, very excited about it, and she can absolutely give you more. So I'm going to have to hop off now, and Stephanie is going to be taking over as the science communication fellow. Okay, now um, there's a target. So enjoy the rest of the watch, and we'll see you again soon. Thank you, everybody.
All right, well, here we are. One meter delta, everything's good. Atalanta's eight meters off the bottom, so that's also fine. We're just gonna uh, do the thing. Oh yeah, neat, that's from the data lab. So, I think what I wanna do is find this one of a kind sciencey thing, and uh, neither do I. Let's just see if we can find something. You can leave Atalanta really, really small delta and 10 meters off bottom. That should be fine. What could go wrong? Okay. I, yeah. Uh, you can see it in butt cam. Awesome. And, uh, oh, my gosh. Oh it yeah, really it. is. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's actually that low. That's fine. Oh. You've been mm. training for this moment. This moment of panic. <laughs> it's all good. So, Elias... I'm going of the to rely on you to help me find out where we're actually trying to go. <laughs> um, I can't get there right now. It's a lot of current. I mean, there's not. I'm just getting pulled by the tether. Yeah, we are just. Um, how many? Let me see. How many meters from waypoint one? Uh, we're not going to a waypoint. We're actually looking for a creature. It's like a special coral. A special coral. Oh, or there something. it is. Oh, okay. that's it right there. Yep. That's it. That's not it. Nope. I'm here. Oh, so we are just kind of looking around. Is Steve up here? Oh, is Steve. Steve knows where it is. Is he's up here? We have a Steve. Oh, Steve, they're asking you where it is. It's right by that sponge. Uh, it is by the sponge. Yeah. We're, we're trying to find the, find the spot. By it's by this one. Keep panning, not that one. It's like a tall, round oh, one. That like one? This one? No, no, not that one either. Okay, uh, I think it's off to my right. I think it, it probably. Just I think it is off to your right. Making yeah. a loop. Okay. Those fiber optics really twist it up. Oh, nine meters. Or sorry, a wrap is fine. Oh, okay. All right. I mean, Atalanta really is right there. Yeah, we're just going to try to drop the tether in the mud as much as possible. That's approved. Hello. Oh, uh -oh. is that your fancy coral? <laughs> Where did that come from? No, that wasn't it. Oh, okay. All right, now I can maybe turn. <laughs> come on, you little rascal. Turn more. Oh, is that it? Is that your spongy? No. No. All right, I'm going to... They dropped a target. Um, they dropped a target. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we're like... Oh, we can't reach far that. Far away from it. Yeah, we'll need to move the ship back if you want to get to there. So it's up to you, Science Row, if you want to move the ship. Move the ship. Move the ship. They'll have to move the ship to get to it. Yes, it's worth it. Oh, okay, nice. Okay, can you move the ship uh, maybe 315, uh, 50 meters? Uh, uh, 30 meters. 315? 315. Okay. Request to come up on Delta? Uh, not yet. Okay. You're fine. You're not even close to the mud. All right. Remember, you got your ten, altimeter. Ten meters away from the mud. That's fine. Uh, Bleach. No. It's not mud. It's rock. It's rock with mud on rock it. Rock with mud. Rock on. Yeah, rock it's a nice on. picture of yeah, Atlanta like and the cinema doing? cam. Yeah. Ah, can we please uh, we step? We have the cinema cam? Three zero meters. We have the cinema cam. You're in three, oh, one, five degrees. Wave. Wave Annabelle. Eight point two knots. I, I, <laughs> wait, wait, I can't, no, I, I can't tilt. No. Roger, thank you. You're facing the other way. Yep. That's. Yeesh. Okay, we're getting back in the box now. This is good. Hello. So what's my what am I actually looking for? We looking they for say it's a sponge that looks like a coral. Yep. A sponge that looks like a coral. Neat. Look at that neat view. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah, and um, Samantha do up the eight targets. So yeah, great. Yeah. We'll go for that then. Shrimp. Um, what I'm gonna do is go this way a little bit. Steve's plugging in, so. Fantastic. And the whole ship tries to get this sponge that looks like a coral. Coral sponge, it's a coral sponge. See a lot of dead sponge. It's 
spongy debris. Spongy debris. Debris. Uh, do you mind if I turn over to look at where you're going? I do mind. I okay. don't have a tether for that right now. I'm not. I'm not going anywhere then. Yeah, you're kind of along for the ride right now, unfortunately. Awesome. What I'd like to do is I'd like to sit down and just stop for a minute, let everything kind of settle out as the ship moves back. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do we sit? Well, we can probably get you a reset. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> why not? I mean, I know why not because maybe I won't have enough distance off bottom, but we'll we'll try it out, you know? Okay, we'll see. See what happens. We got some corally looking things. Alright. I'm gonna try to sit down on this thing. Just give everything a little bit of a chance to breathe for a minute. Alright, I'm going to sit right here, and see what happens. Is Atalanta being sort of dragged towards this uh, situation over here? Atalanta's still heading uh, southeast. Alright. Where is this Oscar? Okay, somewhere, somewhere around here. Somewhere around there. Yeah, we can, I'm not in any hurry. We're still waiting on Atalanta to stop swinging south before we go north, so we're okay. not in a hurry here. Sounds good. The door, it's fine. Cool, you're coming farther away from the wall. Looks good. Roger. Yeah, good spicy handover. I love a spicy handover. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All good. Let me know. Okay, all good. All good, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Deck Frog looks a little bit uh, uneasy. Yeah. Concerned <laughs> with this Delta. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both, Deck Frog. <laughs> Actually, it's getting a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Getting farther away from the slope. Yeah. So the weight is 10 meters below Atalanta at worst, the weight on the tether. Mm -hmm. So as long as your altitude's above 10 meters, then you can't get the thing in the dirt. If your altitude's less than 10 meters, but we're really stretched out, then it can't get there either. Roger. So as we get closer, ideally this number keeps going up. We'll see how it goes. And then we can eventually get back in the box with Spin in Atlanta back around, back to normal delta, etc., etc. But I'm just keeping an eye on that butt cam right now. Make sure everything is happy. Yeah, we were. Yeah, you can see a decent back. current in the cinema cam too. Yeah, everything's all bent over. So okay, now I can probably start my, you know, sit down, check everything out, kind of situation. Cameras. Yeah, cool. Everything's on. Da, da, da. Okay. I think that one's mine. Looks like Atalanta's stopped swinging south, which is great. Mm -hmm. uh, we're deep 2,300 meters, so we're probably going to be able to move in about five minutes. I'm guessing. Looks good. Okay. We do it in there. Can we do a gauge check, please? Roger. Gauge check coming up. Was our last gauge check at 7 a.m.? That's not right. What? No. They just did uh, not 24 hour time, I think. Oh, okay. But it, we're supposed to do 24 hour, so. All right, well, it's gonna look weird. That's fine. 20, Can I get some oh, button, please? 
Gross.